titration of vinegar left. Up next, figure out the concentration of a solution of acetic acid vinegar using sodium hydroxide. You will be starting with a solution that has a known concentration of sodium hydroxide and using a known amount of acetic acid or vinegar. In order to be successful in this lab, I've summarized what you need to do. You might pause at this moment and copy these things down so that as you move through the podcast, you have a better idea of what you need to make note of. Can you look at this burette and read the volume accurately? Again, pause, read it, and see if you're on the right track. How did you do? Second piece of equipment for measuring volume is a pipette. And the pipette is only um, calibrated to deliver one and only one volume. In this case, it is exa exactly 5.00 milliliters. No more, no less. And so you will use a device that will draw the liquid up the pipette to the mar line marked on the pipette, and then you will deliver that to a flask. If you come into class and your burette is not filled to close to the top, you should do that carefully following these directions. Again, pause write down these directions of how you're going to fill up your burette because pouring in sodium hydroxide above your eye level is not safe. You'll pu put the stand on the floor on a tray and then carefully add the base to refill your burette. Here are some other notes about what you will be doing. I think this is just a summary of the procedure in short order, but again, have your procedure with you, double check, maybe highlight your procedure as you look at these lab notes so that you can use your procedure effectively. That's the purpose of this podcast, to inform you what's going on. Don't forget, you're measuring volume to two numbers after the decimal place for this lab. All right. So here is the setup. You have a burette. Underneath the burette, you have a flask. Notice that the tip of the burette goes inside the neck of the flask. You'll be recording the initial and the final volume of the base that you add for this titration. In order to know when to stop adding the base, the key is to use phenolphthalein. So let's back up a minute and try to recall something about phenolphthalein as an indicator. It is an acid-base indicator, so its color is going to change during this titration. So do you, do you have notes? You should have notes of what is the color of phenolphthalein in acidic conditions. You measured these. You, you used, some of you used phenolphthalein in a previous lab. You might pause or think about this. Yes, it is colorless in acidic solutions. So when you start the titration and you have your phenolphthalein in the vinegar, you won't remember if you've added the phenolphthalein unless you make a note of it. Okay, so you might do that. The most common mistake students make, one of them is to forget to add the phenolphthalein. And guess what? You'll never have a color change if you don't add the indicator. When at the end of the titration, what will the color be after you've added the base, which is the sodium hydroxide in your burette into the flask? The color will change to, do you remember? Deep pink. Now this is not the color that you want. That's not the desired color. That will give you poor results, which will lead to a, a less than satisfactory uh, score on this uh, lab. The color that you want to strive to reach is the color where you've just added one drop and it goes from being clear to the faintest possible pink. In that case, you have, had, have combined an equal number of moles of sodium hydroxide to the number of moles of vinegar. 
That is the key to helping you understand the concentration of the vinegar, okay? And as you can see here, I have a little hint. Since your lab tables are black, put a white paper towel underneath the flask, which will allow you to see the color change of the faintest pink more clearly. So you'll begin your first trial. You'll work together with another person using one of your two burettes. And then after you kind of work through the details of this, then you'll each do your own titrations. And if there's time, then you can do a second one. The goal is for you to, within the three mods available to you, complete the titrations, as many as you have time for. But don't go fast, go slow with precision and accuracy is the key. So again, you'll have three mods to do your trials, one mod to do your calculations, and to turn in your results. A little detail, and you might want to pause the podcast to kind of take this all in, but this is a review of the stoichiometry of how we do, uh, using molarity of solutions, we determine the concentration of the vinegar. As I mentioned in class, this is identical to what we've done in the previous chapter, taking the moles of the sodium hydroxide added from the uh, burette reading and going all the way to the concentration of the vinegar. Here's the answer. You might stop for a minute if you haven't already paused the podcast and see if you would come up with the same answer for the molarity of vinegar of this hypothetical situation. Okay, This is not your molarity of your vinegar. I can tell you that. Okay, let's see if you can pause and get this same answer as shown on the answer key here. There's another practice problem. Given this information, can you calculate? So pause and see if you can calculate again the correct answer. You have to do this in lab on C day, so practice now so that you can quickly calculate the molarity of your vinegar while in lab tomorrow. Here's the answer. All right, to review, once you finish the experiment and turn in the results, there'll be a couple of questions as well. Identifying the type of reaction and trying to write net and ionic equations. This is kind of a review of what we talked about earlier in the week. What kind of acid and base are sodium hydroxide and acetic acid? If the acid or base is strong, how do we write them? As ions. If the acid or base is weak, how do we write those as a molecule? If we have an ionic compound, how is that written as ions? Can you write both the ionic and the net equation for this reaction? Again, to review things you need to do to be successful in lab, make a note of these items, four simple things to do, and then finally, oh, Here's a picture of me from a few years ago as we were climbing in, uh, it looks like Canada. Oh well, take care.